in Montreal and I was, we had just finished touring, uh, so jealous, and I was, um, we knew we weren't going to tour anymore and so I had like put all of my touring stuff away and I would sometimes get up in the morning at like nine and then the next day I would get up at like four in the afternoon and I was like, whatever. I don't have to be, I don't have to be an adult and I don't even need a routine. All I need to do is make magic. Exactly. Precisely that kind of magic. And um, But anyways, after like two weeks, I started to feel despondent, um, aimless, depressed. Do you have a song for that? Who was playing the song? Oh, Keegan was. Oh, jeez. Interaction. Go ahead, give me a... That's not sad or how we're just on it. Yeah, that's better. And so, anyways, um, I hadn't written anything new. And one morning, um... I woke up and um, and I heard fire trucks and sirens and, yep, and I thought, oh geez, what's going on? And so um, I went down the stairs of my front house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fit it in a little. Let's not do it as often. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't seem like it's spoken word, and I'm not really going to that. So. Um, anyway, so I went down the stairs and there was fire trucks and there was police cars and there was people in riot gear. And I lived <laughs> I lived across the street from a metro, like a subway, and I also, next to the subway, was a bank. And, it, and so, um, I don't speak French very well, like I can say, like, I want the panini without tomato and stuff, but like, I don't know how to say, like, what the fuck is going on. So, I said to the first cop, I was in my pajamas and I had slippers on, and I had my keys, and I leaned out the door and I said, what's going on? Like, am I in danger, you know? And the cop comes over and he says, get out of the building, there's a bomb threat at the bank. Oh, and I was like, you are kidding me. <laughs> it was so scary. And it was winter, like, you guys are thinking in California, you're like, oh, you should have taken a hacky sack and gone down to the I didn't even have a bra on. It was like, no. And so I said to the police officer, I said, are you serious? Like, can I not just go upstairs and get my stuff? No, ma'am. Get out of the building. It's a bomb threat. And so we... Yeah. It was so scary. And so I fucking went down the street and I stood there for like 20 minutes. I was freezing my ass off and I ended up realizing that I didn't have my wallet or anything so I couldn't go. Eat, they need to laugh that time, stop. <laughs> and so, anyway... Funny. Stop being funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the point, of, the point of the story was that I, um... It, it was inspiring to me because I was like, oh my god, like a bomb threat. Like, it's not Ireland in the 80s. Like, I was like, who's going to a bomb threat to a bank? Like, what is even going to happen? Don't they have, like... I just was like, it's, aren't banks impenetrable at this point? Like, isn't... It's not even... Do people rob banks anymore? Like, I didn't even know that that happened anymore. And so... What happened? I heard someone in Oakland. <laughs> nothing to do with a bomb threat or anything like that, but I, I had this moment where I was looking down at all of the people, the bomb people, and even the, even the tellers, like the people who were working in the bank, everyone had a very serious look on their face, and I just thought, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm trying to look really serious, yeah, okay, all right. Anyway, what, it made me realize, 
that, that, you know, like every every person's life at that moment, like all those individual people, it was like this was a bank teller, and then the bank teller had like a partner, and then maybe the partner had kids, and there was like an aunt and uncle. And I just thought, my God, like one little tiny bomb threat, and so many people's lives. I was wondering in Montreal was that a bra on? I mean, who knew that my life was going to be affected in such a strange way? And I just all I could think was, who is the asshole who called in a bomb threat to this like to Desjardins? It's like the People's Bank in Montreal. Like, I just like, kind of, like, it's like this asshole hates people or something. He hates, he hates nice people. Anyway, so I was like, it was very frustrating for me. Take it, I'm going to break those six shows. I'm going to throw you in a jacuzzi. Okay, so that's, that's seriously, is, this went on really, really long because Tegan started doing a soundtrack, but it was my fault. Basically, I wrote this song. I did write this song about, um, basically about how important life is, but also how much fucking pressure there is to succeed and to survive every day. And I know that seems silly, but it's true. Um, and I don't know, a lot of you seem like you're probably students, and I'm sure you're under a lot of pressure all the time. And maybe sometimes you just, maybe you play ultimate frisbee to let things go, you know, just a drum amok and whatnot. We play hockey, but sometimes we also write songs. So this song, this song is about feeling pressure. It's also going to go dedicated out to the uh, to the Calgary Flames, who are going to um, sadly they're going to sadly eliminate the San Jose Sharks tomorrow. And that's It was a hard, it was a hard, uh, hard fight, and you fought long and hard. And now, I'm <laughs> golfing tomorrow. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. Turn the lights on. Lights on. We can still be friends, though, right? We can still be friends. I'm Canadian. Peace. Friends, okay? Okay, good. Here we go. This one's for the bomb, people. <laughs>